there. Today I look at the British rock group Cream, formed in London in 1966 as a power trio, in which each member was a virtuoso player. The band comprised bassist Jack Bruce, Eric Clapton on lead guitar, and Ginger Baker on drums. With poet Pete Brown, Jack Bruce was the main songwriter and handled most lead vocals, although Clapton and Baker both contributed in these areas. Schooled in rhythm and blues, playing in acts like Alexis Corner's Blues Incorporated, Manfred Mann, the Grand Bond Organisation, the Yardbirds and John Mayall's Blues Breakers, the Cream Trio pioneered British rock music, developing the genres of blues rock, psychedelic rock and hard rock and were a key act in the early rock album era. Together for just two years they made ten singles and four original UK top ten LPs. Rolling Stone journalist Jan Wenner described Cream as the first supergroup where each of the members had achieved success elsewhere, either in a solo career or within another group. This was a popular concept in the late 60s, and following Cream were supergroups such as Crosby, Stills and Nash, Humble Pie and Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Indeed, after their breakup, some other supergroups comprised of Cream members such as Blind Faith with Clapton, Baker, Steve Winwood and others, Air Force with Ginger Baker and Graham Bond, Stevie Winwood and Denny Lane of the Moody Blues, and Derek and the Dominoes, which included Clapton, three from Delaney and Bonnie, and Dwayne Allman of the Allman Brothers. Cream reformed briefly twice, firstly for their 1993 Hall of Fame induction, and then in 2005 for a series of shows in London and New York. In 2006, the band were awarded a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. I hope you enjoy the video. Once again, in today's episode, I'm looking at the original first pressing stereo copies of the 1966 debut LP from Cream, suitably titled Fresh Cream. I've already described the mono copy in a separate video, which provides a little more detail on the genesis and recording of the album, which you may wish to take a look at. Fresh Cream was recorded in London between July and November 1966. The album was released in December that year on the back of two top 40 charting UK singles, peaking at number five on the Enemy album chart in February 1967 during an 11 week run. Upon release in America in 1967, the Atco Records version just crept into the top 40 of their album charts. The LP appeared on Robert Stigwood's fledgling Reaction Records label with the catalogue suffix 001. It was pressed by Philips and distributed by Polydor Records. This was the first of only three hugely successful albums made by the label, the other being number 002, a quick one by The Who, for whom Stigwood was booking agent, and 003 being Cream's follow-up album Disraeli Gears. Indeed, The Who album and the first Cream LP both entered the chart on the same day, Christmas Eve 1966 peaking at numbers 4 and 5 respectively. Fresh Cream was issued in stereo on the Royal Blue label with silver print under the full catalogue number 594001. The label states Made in England and the rim text is an all rights reserved notice. Stigwood's stylized RS monogram appears at the 2 o'clock position. Stereo records have an interlocking circle motif containing the letters ST and the playing speed whereas monocopies have an inverted triangle device incorporating the letter and the 33. Within the track listing, the arrangement for the opening track on side two, Cat Squirrel, which was by the three band members, is credited here under the pseudonym of S. Splurge. On both the record label and the rear cover track listing, the songwriter for Rolling and Tumbling is noted as Muddy Waters, this song is traditional and the original writer is in fact unknown, but the first recording of it was made by Hambone Willie Newburn. Muddy Waters version is perhaps the more famous interpretation, but it was recorded later. There is a subtle variant which lists the side two music publishers at the foot of the label as Getaway Music and Essex Music for tracks two and four, whilst on other copies the publishing credits for those songs are noted as copyright control 
and MCPS. The LP cover is the front laminated non flipback style stating patents pending on the lower right corner of the rear. The catalogue number and stereo wording appears at the top right reading up the sleeve although some read across the sleeve above a seven line notice. Covers were printed and manufactured by Ernest J Day of London West One. The rear of the sleeve features a striking photo of the band in negative and the informative sleeve notes are written by Mayfair Public Relations Limited. The cover design is by Paragon Publicity of Kensington High Street and the photographer is not credited. Sleeves for fresh cream are fragile, being made from thin card which readily shows wear. Many I have seen suffer from creasing, ring wear and seam splits. The unlaminated rear in particular is prone to dirt and yellowing. This copy is actually rather nice and significantly better than most. The inner sleeve is a plain Polydor company die cut paper design. These come with a clear polythene lining bag. Due to the target audience and the fact that these sleeves are not that durable, many copies will be well played and enthusiastically handled and ultimately worn, meaning decent original copies are desirable and valuable. In the current edition of the Rare Record Price Guide, the first stereo copies are valued at £120. And that brings to a close my brief history of the stereo first pressings of the UK debut LP from Cream, Fresh Cream. That's all for this time. I appreciate you joining me and I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did like the video, please feel free to subscribe to the Rare Record Room channel to see similar episodes and to receive notifications for new uploads as they happen. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you next time. Until then, take care. Bye for now.